<laughs> but you do. You just want those two choices, missions or others. Yeah. What are you okay. doing with that? Well, I didn't give them to others. Right. So you can do mission slash others. Okay. That's a lot to write in that little tiny space. So if you put M slash O. Oh, yeah, my answer's on my yeah. Okay. All right. You, you had another thing to say. Um, no. Okay. No. Okay. Oh, well, thank I think you. I'm done. Do you want me to start that? I just started. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We just okay. want to make sure it gets where it belongs. Uh, Sunday school offering, you know, and then you got the others offering too. All right, Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. We don't do a lot of designating funds like that, you know. We just. We say we're just going to give all this to them, so it's kind of hard. Uh, I know a lot of churches you throw it in a pot and, and and they just divide it up, you know, and, and uh, however they want it to go. And I said, before I'm going to say it again. We turn the feet, uh, Second Corinthians chapter six. I'm going to say it again. I don't think sending a missionary twenty five dollars a month is doing. No, no, it doesn't. Not enough. And these churches, I said, they'll say, we have a hundred missionaries we support. Well, you really yeah. don't. You're right. You're right. You, you just got a long list, and that makes you sound good, but I'd rather have a good missionary family and support them yeah. than I would support 50 families at $50 a month. Yeah. And so uh, that's why we've always done it. If you ever want to change it, well, business we can change it, but I thought that was a great idea. Because uh, I've met so many struggling missionaries, they have to go to a thousand churches and candidate to get enough to go where they're going. And uh, if, if we just, you know, support one good one, mainly him, we do the little things on the side, but mainly them. As long as they're doing a good job, I think that's what we're supposed to do. All right, Second Corinthians chapter six. Uh, we've been studying the book of. Second Corinthians, and uh, last week we got down talking about the constraining love of Christ. We talked a little bit about being a new creature in Christ, being born again, becoming a new creature. And so uh, let's start with chapter 6, verse 1. We then as workers together with him, and I want you to always remember that, with him, Amen. Uh, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain, uh, and some people, our, our free will friends, our free will brethren, there's a lot of Christians that are free will. They just don't know. You know they don't know. And uh, don't write them off just because they're wrong on that. You know. uh, if you turn to the book of Jude, verse 4, <clears throat> Jude, verse 4, there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, that's loose living, loose thinking, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So I believe that uh, according to Jude 4, the grace of God in vain, uh, that grace is wasted on them because they never believed in the first place. It's, right. uh, they pronounce it, they say it, but it's in vain because they really don't believe in the grace of God. Yeah. And that's where the Catholic priest comes in yeah. and, oh, and a lot of denominational people come in. Uh, it's, the, it's not that God's grace is vain, but in vain they profess it yeah. and they don't have it. Okay? And I think our churches are full of them. Uh, the great Billy Sunday said, he said, <laughs> he said, I don't think the problem in the church is backsliding. He said, I think the problem in the church, most of them have not ever slid forward in the first place. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> and I agree with him. I agree with him. Verse two, for he saith, I've heard thee in a time, in a time, and uh, Remember that in a certain time he heard them, in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored thee, I brought you along. Behold, now 
is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Well, I think about that accepted time. So I got looking up that phrase and those words. And uh, Isaiah 49, 8, you don't have to turn there. I'm going to read them to you in the King James Bible. Uh, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's talking about Israel here. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee. And in a day of salvation have I helped thee. That succored them. I have helped thee. And I Amen. will preserve thee and give thee for covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause thee, uh, to cause thee inherit the desolate heritage. In other words, he's talking to Israel. He said, I picked the time. I set the time. This is the time that's acceptable to me. And so there in 2 Corinthians, he's telling the church there, he's, he's quoting that verse, and some of the people in there, I'm sure, were Jews because uh, Jews was usually where the synagogue where they started the churches most of the time. And he's telling the people there, uh, now God sent you the grace of God. He sent you salvation. Now it's the time to accept it. Amen. You know not what a day will bring forth. Now is the accepted time. Don't put that off. Amen. Don't put that off. You put it off too long. The day I accepted Christ, he had called me for several years. Every time I needed preaching, I knew I, I, he kept saying, that's you, that's you, that's you, that's you. And I refused it, and I refused it. But that day, and I didn't know anything about the Bible, but something in me said, today, today or not. Yeah. yeah. This is it. Today or never. And I accepted him in that acceptable time. The day of salvation for me was March the 5th, 1978, before some of you were born. <laughs> Though Mark does look like he was born way before 1978 um, <laughs> in his birthday. Uh, now, so, speaking to the church now, those who are believers, in verse 3 says, Given no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. And I talked about that last time. We're all ministers of Christ, everybody. That's not a, that's not a profession. <clears throat> that's a calling for everyone. Every, all of us have the ministry of reconciliation, he said. Amen. And in much patience and in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, that means staying awake at night and praying, in fastings, that means something Americans don't know about, we hardly ever skip a meal, uh, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, whatever they say about you, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. O oh, ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightening us, but you're straightening your own bowels. On, that means the inward part of you. You're the one straightening you out, not me. And now, for recompense in the same, I speak unto my children, that's those that hid one to the Lord, those that formed that church, but ye also, be ye also enlarged. Now, I got to think about that. This is, as saints, we found our day of salvation, or he found us, and now we are to be ministers of reconciliation. We're to share the gospel and, you know, help the brokenhearted, encourage the downtrodden and things like that and win them to Christ. But in doing that, there's going to be offenses. Not that we're going to offend, but others are going to offend us. He says, 
giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Uh, uh, we don't have to slap people back. We don't have to cuss them back. You know, right. uh, you hurt my feelings. That's fine. I live with it. I'm not going to give offense to you. I'm not going to defend myself. I'm, I'm not going to do that. And uh, uh, spiritually speaking, now, after you slap me twice, I'll take it up on myself. What to do? Because he didn't tell me what to do. He just told me to turn my other cheek. And after that, I, hey, we just got to do something ourselves. Amen. Uh, uh, but uh, turn to Philippians chapter 1, verse 10. Philippians 1, verse 10. <clears throat> now, here's what he's talking about right here. Christianity is not a religion, okay? I don't have religion. I don't have any candles I light. I've got no altars I kneel on. Uh, anywhere I kneel is an altar. Standing sometimes an altar. You know, yeah. driving sometimes an altar. Yeah. Uh, I don't have religion. I have uh, the grace of God Amen. imparted into me. Okay. All right now, in verse ten, Philippians chapter one. He said that you may approve things that are excellent, and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now, excellency in Christianity should be number one. Now I'm not talking about putting above soul winning or you know Bible doctrine or something, but I'm talking about the Christian life. They're supposed to see Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yeah. And if they see Christ, we better be excellently yeah, living and doing this thing. Yeah. Or they're gonna see us, yeah. not him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. yeah. And that's what he's saying in our passage in 2 Corinthians. Uh, uh, you're going to suffer. You're going to get hurt. You might get thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. You might get beat. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean we'll lower our standards of excellence. The church of today has no standard of excellence. Amen. Bro, how much this junk? Amen. It's made up, <coughs> slack, worldly junk. It's not anything like, like, like what he's talking about here. No way. And people are so easily offended. Yeah, and on the other hand, Christians <coughs> so easily do offend people yeah. now on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. They offend people on purpose. Now, sometimes we offend people we don't mean to. You know, we're not trying to. And, of course, if we're not in the excellent spot we ought to be in the Christian life, we're going to with our words and our ways and things like that. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. I see all these new young preachers, and God bless them, God bless them, but it's not the same as it was when I first surrendered to preach. It's, it's awful. It's just, it's so slack, and it's, and it's so, they're so demanding, and they're so, they're so vain, and, and, and they glorify self, and all this stuff. It's just, there's no humility in it. There's no Christ-likeness in it. And a lot of it's just big business. Yeah. Anyway, chapter 2, 2 Timothy. He says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now, uh, if the ministry is going to be excellent, you're going to have to be faithful to do it. I'm not just talking about the preacher. Now, we can look at the pastor, the preacher, the evangelist. You know, we can find all kinds of problems. But in our churches, yeah. people have lost the honor and the dignity and the glory of being in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. They just come in like, to the tune up. Bless me if you can, preacher. Many have tried and failed. <laughs> and then some of them come in like this. Yeah. See if you can do anything with me. <laughs> I've been like this before you was ever born. <laughs> Where's the dignity? Where's the honor of Christ? Where's the excellency of Christ? And then as far as real Christians go, if you go back to that, he says... 
Uh, and, and by the way, that verse 3 in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, that the ministry be not blamed. When we're slack and we're too worldly, too carnal, it's the ministry that's blamed. You're right. right. Well, I don't want to go over there. I heard about that guy. Oh, if she goes to that church, I ain't going down there. That's right. Don't don't paint it with a wide brush. Amen. And even though we all have failures, you don't have to stay a failure. You don't have to look like a failure and talk like a failure and act like a failure. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, there's going to be, uh, he says uh, in verse 5, in stripes and imprisonments and tumults and labors and watchings and fastings, uh, there's going to be tribulation. But that doesn't mean we want to change the ministry Amen. because we're being persecuted and because we're having hard times. And I hear people all the time, they say, well, we used to be like that, but we, uh, uh, we just couldn't get anybody to come to church, so we changed it. And I say, who told you you could change it? That's right. Who said you could do that? Well, we just felt like, and now they have these uh, uh, promotional companies that come in and tell them, well, you have to change this, you're going to change that, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Uh, this ain't none of their business. And, right. and they say, well, our, our, our church was dying. Well, maybe there was a deeper problem than that. Yeah. There's going to be labor. There's going to be imprisonments. I think in America, the, the real Christians are finally waking up to see yeah. that it ain't always a bed of roses. And, and people's going to cuss you. And they're going to uh, or say bad things about you now with the worldwide internet and all that stuff. They do it publicly where thousands can hear it or thousands can read it. It ain't that Christianity is any different than it was. It's just that now they have a platform right. that they can spout this stuff off. But we'll not be shocked by that. Right. We're down at the lake. I grew up, we called it the river. These bright lights come and just have a little cloud that shoot out light and, and colors and red and blue. It, it was beautiful. It was almost like being on LSD. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Taryn and Nathan and David, they came up with all these deep, deep thoughts about what was going on, you know. And the end time. I think you threw a little bit in there too. And the uh, uh, boys. Uh, lion signs and one. But it wasn't a lie. It was real. It was real. And you say, well, what's the scientific explanation? Well, the Lord gave it to me. He said, well, we've got all these people that live way up north and they see this stuff all the time. And now they done moved all the way down here and they brought it with them. <laughs> It's another Yankee phenomenon. <laughs> We've always seen sunshine and roses. Amen. And, but it, it was beautiful. It, it was beautiful. Uh, but it was not supernatural. No. It wasn't. It was the sun and it was the atmosphere. And God made every bit of that. That's right. He was just entertaining us old dumb southerners for a night. He did it for y'all for us just like the weather missed us, yeah. engaged the light display. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He can create a beautiful rainbow. He can yeah. do other colors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we haven't gone far enough on that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it'll go on, believe me, we'll get in flying saucers in a minute. Uh, they're landing. <laughs> uh, uh, but what I'm saying is this. Uh, uh, we shouldn't expect the whole world to change just because we did. Right. Amen. It's a common phenomenon, somebody said, <coughs> that we be persecuted and we be put down and things like that. But verse 10, that we be sorrowful, yet inside we're always rejoicing. That we be poor, but we make other people Amen. rich in the Amen. faith. He's talking about in the faith. Uh, we make other people rich. Now, if the ministry changes to where none of this happens, 
And when I say the ministry, I say the ministry of the church, the people in the church, right. the born-again believers. If we change it where none of this happens to the body of Christ, we're going to have to get out of the scriptures. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have to get out of the will of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You can stop suffering as far as this world tormenting you and making fun of you and all that stuff. You can stop that. Sure. Change. Right. To where they like you. No. Well, if you do that, you're going to have to change scriptures. Right. And yeah. they're doing that too. They are. Like that. So I'm talking about we don't give offense in anything. I don't. Now, the last time I said this, a guy left church mad, okay? I don't hate anybody. I expose error. I, 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 I share truth. But I don't hate the people that's in the error. I hate what they're doing. And I know they're going to hell. I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not making that judgment. They're showing that judgment. Right. That's right. But I don't want them to go to hell. Amen. Sometimes I might slap them in Jesus' name. <laughs> but I never would condemn them to hell in Jesus' name. And I'm just joking about slapping. Okay, don't get all upset and start feeling kind. I'm not carrying a sign. I'm not carrying any kind of sign. No. His light shines through me and everything I say and everything I do. Here's my sign right here. Amen. There's your sign right there. You are a sign. Right. Amen. If you got to get out on the street with a big old giant sign and say, uh, uh, sodomites are going to burn in hell. Well, you're wasting your time. You're not going to change somebody by offending them That's like right. that. That's Preach right. the gospel. Amen. 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 I told you we were over at the, there used to be a hotel, motel over on Anderson Road. It's gone now. It got so bad in drugs and stuff. And I was going through the parking lot, and I think I had about six people with me, and they was going door to door. And I walked up on this young lady. She was probably 30s or late 20s. <clears throat> and uh, I gave her gospel tract and introduced myself, and she said, "Well, you wouldn't." <clears throat> she said, "You wouldn't want me in your church." I said, "Yes, I would." She said, "No, you wouldn't. No, your church wouldn't want me." And uh, I said, "Why would you say that?" She said, "Well, uh, I live with a woman." Now this was twenty-five years ago. She said, "I'm a homosexual." I said, "God loves you." Amen. She said, yeah, but y'all say he hates us. I said, I never said he hated you. I said, God loves you so much he let his son die in your place. Amen, brother. Yes. She said, you, y'all say there's something wrong with me. I said, there is. Yeah. You're a sinner. Yeah. You need to be saved. <clears throat> she said, well, uh, uh, I love her and she loves me. I said, well, there's your problem right there. I said, you're just looking for somebody to love you. <clears throat> Remember an old song, Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places? Yeah. Yeah. That was country. I didn't listen to it. I just heard somebody say that. So. Uh, and don't be offended, Merle Haggard fans, okay? Uh, so, I said, God loves you. He loves you so much, he let his son die in your place. So, therefore, I love you because God's in me. I love you. I want you to be saved. Amen. I don't hate you. Nobody hates you. I said, your problem is you don't know where to find love. Right. And you're looking for love, the fleshly kind of love. That's going, you're going to get old, and that's going to die away. Amen. Your feelings is going to change, and that's going to die away. I said, but in here you're going to live eternally. That's you right. need the love of God is what you Amen. need. And then after that, it won't be hard to obey him. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Yeah, my right. commandments not grievous. I said, so he will change your want to. Amen. He'll change the inside yes, out. Yes, thank yeah. you. And she had never heard nothing like that before. Thank you. She said, well, church is full of hypocrites. There's a preacher right up there in that room right there with a prostitute right now. Uh-huh. I said, he ain't no preacher. <laughs> yeah. I know him. If I called his name, y'all would know him. He's on the radio every Thanksgiving. He's in the newspapers every Thanksgiving because he gets people to donate turkeys and fans. <clears throat> but he's a reverend. They call him reverend. I don't hate him. 
You need to get saved. Yeah. Amen. I said, but you can't hold the whole body of Christ. You can't hold That's this right. hostage because of one man. Right. Amen. I said, think of all the ones that ain't like that. Mm -hmm. And she kind of calmed down. I, I said, uh, uh, we want you to come. She said, can I come with her? I said, yeah, as long as you ain't holding hands or hugging or nothing like that. And I said, our married couples that are straight don't do that in church. We honor the Lord. If you come in there hugging and kissing and going on, I'll ask you to leave. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're coming in there and make fun of us if you do that. Yeah, right. And, and she said, okay, but she wouldn't get saved and she'd never come. So what are you saying? Give no offense, anything. But verse seven, by the word of truth, by the power of God, yes, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left. Now, so what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, by verse 6, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, and through the Word of God, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, we are to not offend. Right. Now, you can tell the truth without offending people. Yeah. If, when I was growing up, if you wanted me to go to hell, this is all you had to say. Well, if you don't change, you're going to hell. I wouldn't change just to spite you. But if you come up with a tear in your eye and say, son, you don't have to go to hell. Amen, brother. Amen. God loves you. He wants to save Amen. you. Let me tell you how to be saved. Amen. But I never had anybody do that until after I started going to that church. The Lord drew me. And then they started coming by telling me that story. And uh, so uh, as far as the Corinthian church now, First Corinthians, he, he, he told them a lot of things about a lot of sins, but then here in 2 Corinthians, he's trying to get them to walk in truth and love and honor and uh, Christ-likeness and excellency, you know. Mm -hmm. Christian life ought to be the best life in the world. Amen. I don't ever remember growing up feeling sorry for a Christian. Never. I felt sorry for a bunch of old sinners killing herself, you know, mm -hmm. by their habits and hobbies. Yeah. But I never felt sorry. Christians, I always thought if Christianity is real, that's a good life right there. Mm -hmm. That's a good life. And uh, because they didn't have all the, the torment that came from sin. All right, go to, uh, I got plenty of time even after that little business meeting on. Look at verse 14. <clears throat> but now, after all that, he says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord or agreement or, or contract, what concord hath Christ with Belial, O devil? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living yes. God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Who? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. That's right. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Now, that's a bad word in today's Baptist church. Yeah. Separate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. Turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Galatians, is that clock even working? Galatians 5, 1. Yeah, We're going to have to get a bell for Betty to ring when I'm going too long. She's the only one who's got guts enough to do it, I think. <coughs> She's fighting off drug dealers and aliens down there now. Yeah. <laughs> stand fast, therefore. Ah, stand fast. Right. Fast. Put them in their place. No, nobody right. say it. <clears throat> Galatians 5 1. Stand fast, therefore. Just, just don't move. Stand fast, therefore, in the what? The liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. 
And be not entangled again with the yoke <coughs> of bondage. The world will put a yoke on us and they'll control us. And, and probably one of the worst uh, Christian, they can't destroy a Christian, but far as their life, the most discouraging, destroying thing in the Christian life is to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. Yeah. Number one in marriage. Amen. Yeah. You will not straighten him out. <laughs> you certainly won't straighten her out. We've been trying that since Eve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, Eve started all this stuff, not Adam. Adam knew what he was doing. Yeah. She seduced him. <laughs> I've been doing it ever since. Ain't that the truth? That's the truth. Amen. Don't get mad at me, ladies. Say amen or oh me. That's but the worst thing a Christian you can do is hook up with an unbeliever, whether it be in marriage or business or friendship. Oh, Roy, I want to help you. That's just what your lost friends say. I want to help you. You done gone overboard. You done gone overboard. You're going to church all the time. Quoting scripture. You're running all your friends off. Some of your family don't even like you no more. All you want to talk about is Jesus, the Bible, Amen. church, sin, salvation. Save that for Sunday. People don't want to hear that all the time. Say they want you to compromise. And what they're doing, they're holding you hostage with their friendship. Right. Or yeah. their familiarity, yeah. or the situation, or family. They're holding you hostage. If you'd never made the bond in the first place, you wouldn't have the problem. But if you got saved after the bond was made, come out from the world. Come out from the world. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't leave your wife. You can't leave your husband. They can leave you That's right. over unbelief because they don't believe. And you're free then. But you can't leave them. You made that bond. You made that vow. You got to keep right. it. God hold you accountable if you don't. But if they leave you, then you're free. If they leave you because of your faith. Right. I've known a preacher that married four times because a woman couldn't live with him. Serious. Yeah. He was so mean. <laughs> I ain't going to call his name. I'll lose half my friends. <laughs> you know, Florida. Yeah. And, uh, 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 but the man was a nut. And a woman couldn't live with him. I know another one's been married three times. Same thing. Same thing. Keeps on preaching, though. You got to give that to him. Keeps on preaching. But can't nobody live with him. That's not what he's talking about. Come out, separate yourself from unbelief, separate yourself from sin. We don't beat the sinner up, we don't give offense in it. We just come out. Yeah. Did you know? Preacher Paul Mary told me this. I said, Preacher, if I do that, I'll lose everything I got. I'll have to leave them. He said, No, you won't. They'll leave you. <laughs> if you get thoroughly right, they'll leave you. Yes, they do. They'll come out among you. Yeah. But we have to do that. If, if, if our Christianity is going to be excellence, if it's going to be pure, if it's going to be uh, workable where it can do something, then we have to come out from among them. Yeah. I've lost jobs over that. <clears throat> looking for jobs. I, I mean, in desperate situations, looking for jobs to support my family, there were jobs I couldn't take because of that. And I tell young people all the time, if you go apply for a job, the first thing you need to tell them, don't wait. While you're being interviewed, say, I don't work on Sunday. I know. Because it's going to come up. Yeah. And they're going to say, you should have told us that before we hired you. You deceived us. That's what they'll tell you. And you did. You're just hoping they treat you different. They ain't gonna treat, 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 treat you any different. You need to come out of that job. Oh, but I make so much money. <laughs> well, you make that decision, but I'd rather be poor and happy than be rich and miserable. Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, but anyway, come out from among them. 
and be ye separate, don't be un Here, here's here's what a yoke is. You put you put it around a mule's neck or or a donkey or, or an ox and it's got ropes on it and, and they're hooked to a wagon and you whip them and they pull that wagon, right? That's a yoke, right? Yeah. Hill, you know, you probably did a yoke of oxen over there in Vietnam, didn't you, when you was a little boy? Oh, you was a city kid. <laughs> they have a lot of them over there. There's a lot of oxen there in Vietnam, and they still do the patties yeah. with those oxen. And they got a yoke on them. Well, when you get unequally yoked with somebody, or you just get yoked with somebody, that means now there's two yokes, and they're hooked together. Now, if one wants to go this way, uh -huh. the other one can't go that way. Uh -huh. They've got to go with you. Yeah. And you just, the only way to do that is unhook it. Yeah. And when we, when we got saved, we were supposed to unhook it. And I took his yoke upon me. Yeah. And his burden is light. That yeah. one you used to be under was hard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, you were trying to do it with somebody as hard headed as you were. Yeah. Oh, be not unequally yoked together. Now, <clears throat> uh, did I read 2 Timothy chapter 6? I'm running out of time. 2 Timothy chapter 6, 3 through 5, real quick. <clears throat> 2 Timothy. Was it 2 Timothy? Yeah, 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6. I'm sorry, I'm going to do 2 Timothy. Y'all forgive me. I didn't get a a bit of sleep Friday night. It got down in the 40s. I had a little blanket and froze to death. And then there was a grizzly bear that come up in the tent next door to me. His name was Mark. <laughs> Kept me and Nathan. Nathan was in the tent beside me and he said, Mark, 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 Mark sounded like he was building a house over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, never gonna live it down. I hope you ain't easily offended. God, I'm gonna ride that one. <laughs> Amen. I was already struggling to freeze in the dead. Amen. All right. Uh, First Timothy six three through five. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, wholesome words means it's good for you. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. You don't hear much about that anymore, do you? No, you there is a doctrine of godliness, meaning that we're supposed to be like God by our practices. You know. He is proud. Now this is the man that goes against that. He is proud, knowing nothing, but <laughs> doting about questions and strifes of words you see that? You ever had a lost friend? They just want to argue with you yeah. about it. Yes. Yeah. They know nothing. Right. Uh, he's uh, proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, surmises, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness from such, what does that say? Withdrawals. Come out from among them. Yep. Be ye safe. Now, if, if we're unequally yoked with somebody, they're really not our friends anymore. They're in a whole different world than we are. I love them. I'd like to see them all saved. Most, most of my old friends are in eternity now. But, but I never did. But I couldn't be around them because they say, well, Did Adam have a belly button? No, he didn't have a belly button. He had no mother. He didn't need a belly button. Y'all never thought about that, did you? I see some surprise in your eyes. Oh, yeah. <coughs> there wasn't an umbilical cord. He had no mother, so he had no belly button. He didn't either. And I wish some other people would get rid of theirs, too, by covering them up. <laughs> and later on, they decide to get a divorce. Would they still be brothers and sisters? <laughs> that's a joke. Don't be offended. I'm not. Really <laughs> I know that's not true. I'm just joking. Some people can't take a joke. <clears throat> but they'll argue about this stuff. 
You don't need to be yoked up with them, okay? Amen. My time's up. I can tell people are coming in. My time's up. Let's go ahead and dismiss in prayer. Terry, pray for us. Let's, let's get this. Thank you, Father, for this message today. Thank you for the Sunday school and for our pastor. Thank you for the people that made it today. And Lord, pray that you'll bless those that are watching today, those that are going to come and cook. And Lord, we pray that you'll be with us and do the services to come. God, I ask for your power and your strength to help us to, to do just that and come out for a long be separate. It is hard for our flesh to walk away from people that we know we shouldn't be up to. Right. God, so we ask that you just help us in that walk of faith. And we love you and thank you for all that you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. You got 15 minutes. Bathroom break. <laughs>